Today I'm gonna show you how I set up my desert scorpions. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoyed these species-specific care and husbandry videos, setup videos, or pretty much anything to do with tarantulas or scorpions, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell. Select all notifications. That way you won't miss any new videos I upload in the future. Now today, I'm gonna walk you through the process of setting up an enclosure for a desert species of scorpion. Most of these scorpions need no humidity at all. In fact, humidity can be detrimental to their health, so you need to have them in an arid setup. Where this becomes a problem is that some of these desert species also like to burrow, so keeping them on straight sand just won't work. Now today's enclosure is gonna be for the desert hairy scorpion. It's known scientifically as the Hatteras arizonensis, and commonly is also known as the Arizona hairy scorpion. Now this is the largest scorpion in North America, reaching a size of nearly six inches. The desert hairy scorpion is very sensitive to humidity and needs to be kept in arid conditions because they are prone to fungal infections if their environment is too damp. Now, initially when I got this species, I was keeping mine on just plain sand and realized really quickly that that was not gonna work. This species really enjoys burrowing and it's just not able to burrow if it's on straight sand. So I switched it up to like a 60-40, 50-50 mixture of peat moss and sand. I was hoping that would hold the burrows a little bit more. Now it was able to dig some burrows, but there was a propensity for those burrows to kind of collapse in on themselves, trapping the scorpion, then have to dig its way out again. So I wanted to get something that was gonna be a little bit firmer. So I reached out to my friends over at ZooMed Laboratories and explained to them the situation and they hooked me up with some stuff that should work very well for this situation. Now this isn't a sponsored video, they're not paying me to make this video, but for full disclosure, they did send me most of these items at no charge. They simply just asked me to give an honest review and just kind of show you guys how I use these products to set up my enclosure. They provided me with a cavern kit with excavator clay burrowing substrate, the creature's LED black light, creature's LED light, the creature's combo dome lamp fixture, and the creature's creature therm heater. Now I wanted to give this scorpion an enclosure that would give it the ability to dig out its own burrow. And if possible, I also wanted to be able to see inside that burrow. And I think that this setup will give me the ability to kind of create a starter burrow so that I can actually have a little window to view the scorpion while it's down inside. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of mixing this clay substrate and getting everything set up. Then once it dries and hardens, uh, we'll go ahead and do a rehousing and introduce this guy to his new enclosure. Now typically I would keep this species in just a normal five and a half gallon enclosure. But unfortunately, I don't have any of those available right now. And I went to two different pet stores two or three times this week trying to find some enclosures that size and nobody had any in stock. They said because of COVID-19, there were some items they just weren't getting regularly stocked and those are, I guess, one of those items. So what I opted for was this ZooMed low profile creature enclosure. They did have some of those in stock and since ZooMed was so nice to send me out these items, I figured we'd use their enclosure as well. So this they didn't give me, this I bought with my own money full retail, uh, but I think it'll work nicely, at least temporarily. So first step is gonna be be to mix up the clay substrate. So let's get to that. So for the first step, we need to just add the water to this substrate and uh, get it all set up. And it looks like you don't even need to use another tub. You can just take this bag, fold it over the edges of the enclosure and mix it up right inside. And we need to add three cups of water slowly. So I'm gonna do one cup at a time and kind of stir as I go. All right, so I've got it all mixed up. It looks like it's at a pretty good moldable consistency. Uh, they do stress that you don't add any more water than just those three cups. And I can see why, I mean, it, it kind of looks like it's not ready, but I have a feeling once I start using it, it will be. I watched too many YouTube videos on this stuff 
saw people that added more water than what was in the instructions and ended up taking forever to dry. So we're gonna follow the instructions. Now I did grab just some like little pieces of like cocoa fiber, like little sticks and stuff like that and kind of mixed it in there as well, just to kind of give it a little bit more naturalistic look. Nothing to really add in much consistency. It's mainly just for aesthetic purposes. So hopefully that'll turn out well. Now this is a shallow enclosure. I usually would want one that's, you know, maybe like one and a half or two times as deep as this, but this will have to work for now. And the nice thing with this Zoomed enclosure, it does have the little tracks that slides in. It's got this little piece of metal that will lock it into place. So you don't have to worry about them escaping. So I'm gonna set this up where like about two thirds of it is gonna be substrate. There'll just be a, a small portion on the top that it can walk around during the day if it would like and have enough room between the top and the screen to do that. So what I've done here is I blew up one of the balloons. This will kind of make a little cavern for it down deep into the uh, substrate. I'm gonna tie this string around the edge of the balloon, run it through this tube and make a tunnel leading from the top down to the bottom. That way it'll be a window into its burrow so that I can check it out while it's down there hiding. All right, I don't like the way that the balloon was looking on it, like the way it was turning out. That's probably best used for maybe some kind of reptiles. I think all I really need is just kind of like this tunnel. So I'm gonna scrap it and start all over again. It's a nice thing about this stuff. You can just break it down, rebuild it. So this is take two. <laughs> All right, so now I got like the base of it done. Oh man, I'm getting clay all over my camera. Let's not do that. But I've got a nice starter burrow set up here. I'm gonna let this dry for a few days. Hopefully it'll be dry, ready to go. And uh, we'll finish setting it up, put the finishing touches on it and move the scorpion in and it'll be good to go. So see you in a few days. All right, so uh, I've got it all pretty much set up here. Uh, I'm using just the same type of substrate that I use for most of my scorpions, which is, I mean, I call it my scorpion mix because that just kind of sounds cool, but it's pretty much just, uh, what is it? Peat moss and sand. So I just mixed up the sand and the substrate, kind of make that for half the enclosure. And then I got the excavator clay set up and uh, the back half of the other enclosure. And I gotta say, it, I let it dry for about six, seven days. I think that the package said it would only need to dry for like three or four days, 
but I, I kind of made like a big huge mound of it instead of spreading it out. So I think that's why it took a little bit longer. It was, it was really thick instead of just like you know, a whole bunch of thin little burrows running everywhere. But it looks really cool. Uh, and I've got it, I actually took a spoon and dug out a few other hides. So it's not as deep as the main hide that goes all the way to the back bottom corner. But it gives it three different options to choose. And there's a huge base for it underneath this sand for it to burrow and have a nice substantial safe burrow. So I'm just gonna add a water dish and a couple more fake succulents. Get this guy moved in there and I think we're gonna be good. Overall, I am really stoked about this. Uh, I do have, hold on one second. Once I got it all set up, I will be using this Creatures uh, Combo Dome Lamp fixture. It's got both the black light and the LED daylight. Uh, so I'll show you that, how it looks when it's all set up. But on the side where I put the uh, excavator clay, where I, I intend for it, hopefully to be making its burrow and spinning most of the time. I'm gonna be using this small little under tank heater. Not everyone likes to use the under tank heaters, I understand, but I keep mine in my basement. It can get a little cooler down here and I know this is more of a desert species. And I'm gonna put it on the side of the enclosure, not underneath. That way it'll be warm in one spot and kind of push the warm this way. So that way it'll give it like a warm side and a cool side and I don't have to worry about it like just sitting right on top of the heat pad and getting too hot. And one thing you wanna do when you're getting a water dish for your scorpions is to make sure it's a shallow water dish. I like ones that are, are nice and wide, but aren't very deep. Because you know, unlike tarantulas, scorpions can drown. And if you get them one that's too deep, there is a possibility that it could get trapped in there and not be able to get back out and drown. So you wanna make sure that it's a shallow water dish. Just kind of tie it in together. I am going to sprinkle some sand just kind of on top of the excavator clay. All right, so we got this side cleaned off. Now the debate, do I put it on the back side or just the side? I think I'm gonna put it just on the side. Now we're ready to get this one moved in and get everything set up and ready to go. Well, it looks like it's already made itself at home. Uh, that's good. It shows the largest burrow that goes the deepest and, uh, and I'm pretty excited about that. You know, overall, I gotta say, I wasn't sure how this was gonna work out. I didn't know if it was gonna be right for this scorpion. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed um, making this whole little setup and I enjoy the way it looks. And I think the scorpion, yeah, I think the scorpion's gonna enjoy it as well. It's, you know, it's uh, it gets really hard, which is cool, but it's still just, it'll break apart if I really kind of dig at it. So the scorpion should have no problem digging its burrow, but and it will have no problem holding its shape. In fact, I liked it so much, I went out and I bought my own bag of it off Amazon. Um, so if you wanna get some, check out your local pet store. There's probably some there. I'll leave a link down below in the description to my Amazon storefront. And I'll be sure to have some listed there under the enclosures and husbandry list. But yeah, that's cool. I think this, this enclosure is gonna be much more aesthetically pleasing and the scorpion's gonna like it a lot more than just kind of the bare bones setup I did have it in. So a huge thanks to ZooMed for sending me out that package. Uh, yeah, everything was great, I liked it. And I can't wait to make a few more enclosures for my scorpions. If you wanna see more videos on my scorpions, check out this playlist right here. If you wanna see more do-it-yourself enclosure builds, check out this playlist right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday.